Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in. Today we will speak about dividend investing or investing in companies by focusing on dividend yield, dividend growth and dividend potential. There are a lot of traps in dividend investment and some common mistakes which many people are doing. There are some important things that you must look when you are thinking about investing in some company for a dividend. I will give you some examples and comparisons between higher dividend yield or lower dividend yield which is growing faster. We will speak also about financial engineering and many other things. But as always, before we move on, I will show you my portfolio. And as you can see here, value of my portfolio is has almost reached $48,000, which means that my year to date return is sitting at around all time high, which is about 30% for 2020. S&P 500 is actually also doing very good, especially if we compare it to the first half of the year and that huge drop in the March. But since I didn't do actually any changes in the last few weeks, let's move on to the today's topic. So dividends are one form of a how company can return cash that company generated to its shareholders. Dividend is one of the most important reasons why many people are actually investing in stocks. Because generating additional cash while you are sleeping is a really tempting thing. And you can, of course, use it for uh, many different things. For example, you can repurchase shares with that cash. You can invest that cash in some other companies and in that way grow your stock portfolio even faster. Some people are, of course, even living on their dividends when they have a big portfolio. That is what you are able actually to do. But there are some misconceptions about dividends and some things that you must be aware of before making your own decision about investing in some dividend stock. So that is why I have actually divided this topic in three segments. The first segment is real payout ratio. What do I mean like that? Well, one of the most important things when you are investing in stock because of a dividend is payout ratio of a company. That is percent of net income, which company generated, that they are returning to their shareholders via dividends. For example, you can see on Apple that Apple is annual dividend is 82 cents, which is 0.67 dividend yield on $123 of stock. As you can see here, for example, Apple's payout ratio is 21%. What does that mean? Well, that means that they need, they need to use 21% of their annual net income to pay their shareholders 82 cents of dividend per stock per year. Why is that metric important? Well, it is actually very important. That tells you actually how much can a company grow its dividends based on their current earnings. How much power do they have to increase their dividend based on their current business performance? Let's put it that way. And as you can see here on Apple's example, they can basically quadruple their dividend before they reach ceiling or 100% or of their payout ratio, which is on surface, really, really good thing to see. 20% payout ratio is really low. There are a lot of websites which are tracking this metric and you can check for yourself several different companies. And you will see most of them have higher payout ratio than Apple has. But why did I call this section of my video real payout ratio? Because this payout ratio is not actually real. Because there are two ways of how company can return cash to its shareholders. One is of course dividends and second is actually share buybacks. And you should always, and I mean always, under all circumstances, include cash that company is returning to its shareholders via share buybacks into payout ratio. For example, you can see at Apple in last quarterly earnings, you can see that last year they had around 18 billion stocks outstanding. And this year they barely have 17 billion stocks, which means that they actually repurchased 900 million their own stocks. So let's make some simple calculation. You can see here that their cash dividend is 82 cents. That gives us a yield of 0.67%. If we multiply 0.67% with market capitalization of Apple, which is 2.1 trillions, we get 14 billion. So basically Apple is right now spending around $14 billion of cash for its dividend payouts, which gives us around as we've already seen, 20% payout ratio. But then again, we have to calculate share buybacks too. And last year, they have bought back 900 million shares. If we multiply that with $122, we 
we get $109 billion. So basically you can see that they are returning basically to their shareholders a lot more cash with share buybacks than they are actually doing it with dividends. And in total, if we put that $109 billion of share buybacks into payout ratio, we see, we see that they are actually returning 109% of their net income generated in the last year to share with share buyback. In total, if we put together dividends and share buybacks, we see that Apple actually returned 129% of their net income uh, to their shareholders. Of course, this number is not exactly correct because Apple was buying its shares throughout all of the year and we are trading right now at all-time highs. What I'm trying to say, they were paying less for these stocks than they are trading right now. So they have spent a lot less on their share buybacks. But nonetheless, you can see that payout ratio actually looks completely different when we take into consideration share buybacks. And how can actually they return 129% of their net income to shareholders? How is it possible to get more than 100%? Well, there are two options for that. Option number one, you can raise debt to return more cash to your shareholders than you are generating. Or second thing, which is Apple actually doing, is they can use cash that they have generated in the past, but they didn't return or spend. But we will talk about that a little bit later. So bear in mind, you must always add share buybacks to dividends when you want to calculate real payout ratio. That will tell you what is real potential of your company in terms of dividend growth in the future based on current business performance and outlook. Second thing is what should you choose? Should you choose perhaps company which is uh, growing its net income and dividends faster but are providing you right now with lower dividend yield? Like we've seen for example at Apple, Apple's dividend yield right now is 0.7%. In the past Apple has was uh, increasing its dividend yield by more than 10% annually. So dividend is growing uh, very fast for Apple investors, but dividend yield is really, really small. Or should you choose perhaps some companies with higher dividend yield? You can check, for example, telecom companies are famous for their high dividend yield. Verizon, AT&T, they have dividend yield or 4 or 5%. Well, if you choose a company which is yielding, for example, 3% right now, in next 10 years, you will get 30% of your investment back as a cash via dividends. But if you tell yourself, hmm, I would rather invest in company with lower dividend yield, but which is growing its dividends very fast every single year. For example, we can imagine that you have invested in company with dividend yield of 1%, which is growing dividends 10% annually. After 10 years, you would actually receive only 16% of a cash on your investment back as a dividends. Of course, we are completely ignoring capital gains and potential uh, growth in a stock price because we are focusing right now only on dividends. So you can see in this situation, perhaps it would be more wise to invest in a value stock, which is perhaps not growing so fast, but is producing very, very high dividend yield. Of course, I have compared some two imaginary stocks with dividend yields of 1% and 3%. But in this example, you, should, you can see that if you are focusing mostly on dividends, you should rethink your strategy if you are mostly investing in companies which are yielding low yields, low dividend yields, but are growing them fast. The third thing is actually financial engineering. That is extremely important in this period when we actually have very, very low yields on debt. A lot of companies are issuing a lot of debt in order to buy back their shares. That can actually decrease their return in the future because sooner or later they will have to repay their debt. But in some circumstances, raising debt uh, to return cash to its shareholders might be okay thing temporarily. For example, Apple in the past had more than 200 billion cash on their balance sheet, but most of that cash actually was outside US. Because in order to bring it back, they had to pay 35% taxes on cash that they would be actually returning to the US. So what actually they were doing, they were issuing debt in the US and using it to pay dividends and do share buybacks of their stocks. And they were investing basically money that they had outside US. So what was happening actually, Apple's cash pile was growing, so was their debt pile. But again, in those circumstances, that was really a good option for them to do. Another thing where perhaps that might be a good thing to do is if a stock of a company with great balance sheet gets hammered for some temporary reason, perhaps it would be a good thing to 
issue some debt in order to, to buy back large amounts of their stocks. But that can, that can be very, very dangerous. For example, you can see here this headline. Airlines and Boeing want a bailout, but look how much they've spent on stock buybacks. So basically, Boeing and airline stocks spent tens and tens and tens of billions of US dollars on share buybacks in less 10 or 12 years since financial crisis in 2009. So what did they do? They have actually didn't preserve any cash for the future. They were spending all cash on share buybacks to increase price of a stock and to increase their bonuses. And they didn't think about company's future, about per perhaps some trouble sometimes like we have right now. And now they need bailout, they are raising debt, they are issuing more shares, and they are completely destroying shareholders' value. So you must calculate real payout ratio. If it is about 100%, you should be extremely cautious. I'm not saying to, that you shouldn't invest in companies with payout ratio, which is about 100%, but you should dig deeper and check actually what is happening. How is it possible that companies paying more than 100% of their net income? And how are they doing that? Are they simply spending cash from which they have generated in the past, or they are perhaps issuing debt and they are jeopardizing future of their company. There are a lot of famous companies right now which are issuing debt in order to do share buybacks. For example, Nike is one of them. So just be careful. No matter how famous or how big the company is, you all remember car companies and car like uh, GM and Ford and many more, which were paying huge amounts of cash to their shareholders via dividends into 2008 and 9, and they were Many of them were, were, were doing that with uh, issuing more debt because they were famous as a big dividend companies and they, they suddenly stopped generating cash, but they didn't want to stop issuing uh, dividends. So on the short term, you did very well because you, you continued receiving your dividends. But on the long run, you know what happened. United States government had to step in in order to for those companies to survive. So check balance sheet of a company that you are investing. Check, for example, great benchmark of if dividend yield is high or low would be dividend yield of S&P 500, which is right now at around 2%. So that should be benchmark to you if dividend yield of particular company is low or high. So use bench, use S&P 500 as a benchmark. So watch a dividend yield, watch a real payout ratio, check balance sheet of your company, do not risk your hard-earned money, and don't chase hype companies with very low dividend yield and very high price, because in the long run, you won't receive a lot of dividends on your investment. Perhaps sometimes boring but steady value companies with higher dividend yield is a good way to go. Thank you for watching and see you next time.